Welcome to East Coast DNA. Uh, today we have someone who I wanted to say was a return guest, but Tara, I don't think you were actually a guest on this show. When I interviewed you, it was the Jam Sessions podcast. That's right. I have the sticker to prove it. Yeah. And I have the sticker to prove to Mike that I am actually a friend of Tara's. Well, I have a number, uh, not to be done, I have a number of thanks for participating stickers from my middle school athletics program. Oh, there you go. You win. Which I, which I, which I cherish. Uh, I don't mind telling you. So. I didn't participate in that many athletics in high school, so you definitely win. You would have way more than I do. Some cruel teacher thought it would be fun to continue to challenge me with it. But uh, I, I this is my promise to you folks as the new year creeps ever closer. I'm going to best that chin up bar yet. <laughs> awesome. I love it. <laughs> yeah, good reaction right there off the bat. Sort of a guffaw there. From... <laughs> so it out of its brackets is that what you're saying yes <laughs> rip it down now, yeah well that's right i haven't i the, good point i mean it's all it's in the it's the nuance of it isn't it i didn't say exactly that i'm going to you know actually do chin-ups i mean come on that's don't fair. let this don't let that's this fair. don't let my svelte swimmers build uh fool you now I am curious. Speaking of being fooled, I've I've had a couple instances over the past few months where I've had more volume of interviews. There's a lot of people that have similar names in our region, right? But I knew your name, Mike. But I, to be honest, I'm aware of you because of this new Christmas single that you have out, and I'm a fan of Tara, so I follow her stuff. So I was curious a little bit about who Mike Beggar is, but I knew I knew the name and I was sitting here the other night and I had this CD that Jacqueline gave me just a yeah. couple of weeks yeah. ago, actually, and I see a familiar name there. So is this the same Mike here on this? Indeed. That's right. So where do you come from? Like other than your mother? <laughs> Well, I live in uh, I live in a little town called Quispam Sis in New Brunswick, which is uh, adjacent to St. John, New Brunswick. So right at the southern point of the province on the Bay of Fundy. And uh, I figured when you said that you thought you recognized my name, but you didn't know from where you were going to be another one of those people I owe 50 bucks to because there's yeah. a lot of them. So I'm glad Tara's in Alberta or wherever the hell she is, because have you left yet? No, I leave this afternoon. Oh, I see. Yeah. OK, well. You're not getting well, any money out of me. So You're not getting any money out of me before you go. I'll tell you that right now. But anyway, uh, no, I'm from St. John, originally New Brunswick, so I haven't gone very far, just next door. And uh, I can see that my social media strategy is working well on you. I've been around since 2010. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the, the name I've, seeped I've, in. The name seeped in, yeah. And uh, so, you know, I've been at it for a long while, and uh, I've uh, been fortunate enough to, I've put like, five albums out and uh and uh, this is getting the more more depressing the more i sort of list my bona fides here it gets sadder and sadder doesn't it uh i didn't think i'd be adding alcohol to my coffee this early in the day but here we go and uh i've been fortunate enough to win a couple of music new brunswick awards and a couple of ec mays and you know for my music and uh and one of them was from my uh Christmas album, which has been out low these many years, which is called The Season, which was sort of the progenitor of the Christmas shows that we do and this tour that's coming up uh, with wonderful, marvelous, irreplaceable, magnanimous, benevolent Tara Spencer, who seems wow. to have excellent uh, morning hair. I'm impressed. Oh. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's it's all day hair. It's round the clock hair. <laughs> all day <my> hair. <laughs> But anyway, man, that's kind of my background, I guess. And so I've been at it for a while now, sort of a roots and blues guy. And I, I do, I am a drummer as well and a percussionist. And so I I did some on Jacqueline's album that you held up there. I did uh, some, a uh, bit of drumming and some percussion and some backing vocals on that uh, project for her. And how did this collaboration come about? Uh, Tara, I'm familiar with you a little bit anyway, but... I know you do a lot of collaborations the last couple of years. I seem to see like outside of your own material that you're doing, I do see Tara Spencer and or someone and Tara Spencer probably every other month. 
So how did the collaboration with Mike come about? Sure. Well, I was thinking about that um, before we jumped on this call together. And I think I have essentially photographic evidence because uh, my home turf is on the Kemp shore here. And my, my aunt and her partner for a number of years have run a festival there that Mike has been part of uh, many times. And I have a photo of uh, Mike with maybe my first collaborator, you know, Ryan Cook from Yarmouth, standing outside the porta potties at the Kemp Shore Acoustic Festival. <laughs> and so I think that might have been one of my very first encounters with Mike. And uh, you old, you old romantic, you. <laughs> I know. It's framed. I, I don't know if you can tell. Um, yeah, yeah. So that might have been. I'm, I'm guessing that was probably the first place that we bumped in to each other, Mike, because that's where my sort of musical adventure began. There, you were just an, you were an aspiring ice cream scooper girl. That's it. Yeah, you know, you all have to start somewhere. So with a dream in your, with a dream in your heart and uh, an ice cream scoop in your hand. <laughs> and so, really, oh, Mike's really? been there from the start for your musical career as far as somebody that you knew in the yeah. industry that's doing the same type of thing that you're doing now. Sure, yeah. No, he was uh, probably the most famous person I knew at that point in time. So, uh, Oh, my God. It, it took, we've just made one of those fast friendships. And Mike is one of the funniest people that I know. You might not know it from this podcast, but um uh, yeah, no, he he just is one of those folks who can crack. Sound like a challenge? To, is that a challenge <laughs> yeah, to my game or something? I slid that in. I wonder if yeah. you would like that. Better, or, better but... sass it up here. Better sass yeah, it up. Uh, yeah, I wasn't sure how strong your coffee to booze ratio was sitting right now. Uh, but yeah, we just always um, have have stayed in touch on a regular basis and commiserate together and celebrate together. So it took a long <clears> time though before we actually you know, sat down and, and decided to collaborate. And I was thrilled to be invited on this Christmas project. We've had so much fun with every step of it so far. And the shows haven't even happened yet. Yeah. That's, and a, very, that's a very nice summary of, of everything. I thought you were going to say just court ordered when he said what yeah. brought you guys together. I thought it was going to just be that, you know, but that was nice. You expounded on it nicely. <laughs> never say never. Right, right. <laughs> And so now, Mike, you mentioned the previous Christmas release. So how many years have you been doing like a Christmas tour? Because I'm kind of, to be fair, even though I follow a lot of independent stuff here on the East Coast, yeah. there's a big gap in stuff that <clears throat> I don't know when I had children. And I wasn't going to Christmas concerts at that level when I had little kids. So yeah. I'm starting to like <clears throat> mention there's a series of these holiday episodes right now and so yeah. we just had crash test dummies here do their tour with carlton stone and john mullane and sapa costas coming up here later in the week like we're full tilt into christmas shows well it's like and, it's like a it's like a who's who of christmas nostalgia right there well yeah and that, dolly and uh uh you know burr lives and then the crash test dummies and there's a actually, I think uh, Kenny and Dolly like tribute show at the Carlton too. So there is, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. So you've you've been doing Christmas tours for a few years then, or is this well, like a, uh, every other year? Yeah, tour is the in terms of it being whether it's been like a structured tour or not. That has kind of come and gone, and it's it's kind of existed through <clears throat> different sort of iterations, I guess. You know, like we. That album, The Season, came out in like 2011, so it's been around a while now. And it has provided an opportunity, though, ever since uh, to, you know, give me uh, a reason to hit the road in one fashion or another. Sometimes that's just been me and one other guy on the road with me, a guitar side guitar player. Uh, I've gone, you know, outside the region, across around the country with it. Um, I've, you know, done... There have been a couple of years where it was just very, very local. Um, but in the last uh, couple of years, <clears throat> the sort of what now has become the more for, sort of formal songs of the season tour um, has kind of been developing. And so we've been playing more in larger rooms and theaters. And the opportunity to work uh, with Tara 
uh, came along after, you know, <laughs> I had worked for a couple of years with uh, Jessica Ray, who's a wonderful singer songwriter here in our region in Hampton. And uh, it had to become a bit of a tradition almost. And Tara put a new, or excuse me, Jessica put a brand new album out this year. It's a wonderful album, but she's very busy this fall with touring. So she couldn't commit herself to a practice schedule. Or if she'd known the kind of practice schedule Tara and I would keep, <laughs> she probably would have thought I could do that uh, in my sleep. But anyway, Tara, little <laughs> subtle hint there. Anyway, uh -huh. but um, anyhow, uh, like Tara and I, as she mentioned, we've been friends for a long time. She's always been a great pal and I admire her so greatly. And <clears throat> we've always joked that we were in Kansas City together this past year at the Folk Alliance Conference. And we were joking about how for being such pals, we never seem to be able to find the right way to kind of mesh our musical sort of styles or realities together. <clears throat> and then I realized it, it was kismet, as they say, it was meant to be. And so uh, she was, you know, uh, about as, I would say she was about as enthusiastic as I could have expected when I asked her to join me. And well, Mike, uh, uh, Mike sees the opportunity because he realized that I'm not busy at all. I have nothing going on. Right. Precisely. <laughs> a, a big Precisely. In the Real computer. wallflower, you know, just baking some bread or something, maybe doing the odd live stream. <laughs> of course, Tara is extremely busy, as she should be. And what with her recent win from Music Nova Scotia, she's uh, got every reason to be out there busy, busy. But um, I was really delighted that she was able to come along and so this is, we've expanded it this year, this this show into sort of five locations around the Maritimes. So that's the first time I've done that in probably six years or something, you know. So it's kind of gone through a bit of evolution, devolution, and re-evolution, and, which is not, none of, you don't hear about any of that in Sunday school, by the way, but anyhow. When does the tour start, like those five dates start? It started last night, and I was very disappointed that Tara wasn't there. She seems to have forgotten <laughs> And uh, I, I tried to do shoveling rain, but it didn't work out very well. It's not December uh, yet, Mike. It's not December. Right, December right. December. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it starts on Friday, December the 8th in Fredericton. The awesome. province's capital at the Charlotte Street Arts Center. Yeah, December 8th. And then runs through kind of over those two weekends, like the 8th and 9th. Um, we're in Fredericton and then Truro. And then the next weekend. 15, we're at the Imperial in St. John. 16, we're in St. Andrews at the Dunn Theater. And we end in Charlottetown on Sunday the 17th with a matinee at the Trailside Music Hall. Awesome. And did I hear that Tara is leaving in the meantime? Well, she's had enough. I mean, you know. Yeah. It's... She needs a break to rest. <laughs> yeah. Or your thought. Yeah. 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 I just needed to get pumped up and uh, frankly you know, Mike was so bah humbug about the whole thing that he <laughs> to wait till he rediscovers his uh, Christmas spirit. No, I have a quick little jaunt to Alberta, but it, it won't do any harm. We've, uh, we've got such a great cast of characters, the Sugar Plum Boys, uh, that Mike has assembled some of his favorite players and collaborators and um, we have actually all been in the same room together, which was a huge accomplishment. We have. Mm -hmm. uh, we and... have. We won't do that again. <laughs> we learned our lesson. Not till Fredericton. No, no. Uh, I'm just thrilled. Again, it's it's genuine thing. Mike has really got this show down to uh, spirited science, and and I'm really excited about the songs that he's assembled and the variety in the show. It is a great mix of you know, traditional songs and you know, kind of classic cheese and original tunes and classic yeah, cheese yeah. classic <laughs> cheese yeah yeah we're cheese balls at heart so yeah and then there's this new song too that that kind of came almost as a a side thought to the whole project um Mike has boldly displayed the song's artwork I'm tried him. I'm tried not. Uh, unless that's the actual wall in your living room <laughs> <clears throat> well I, I got a little excited i'm gonna i'll be honest it's uh, confession time and uh yeah it's uh it's a little bit weird at three in the morning when i wake up to pee and i look up and there's let me see see my snarling face yeah. right <laughs> you better meet my demands in that contract that sort of thing who's yeah. the I could, artist i could kind of put that. my i could kind of put my head under this hat and then yeah. i could just sort of <laughs> 
that's perfect alignment. I love almost that. works. It almost works. Yeah. Was that one of you that did the artwork or did you have a collaborator for that as well? I was fortunate enough to be able to catch Tara at a really angry moment with that picture. <laughs> and she also just happened to be wearing a little elfin sprite outfit and a Santa hat. And, uh, and then I, yeah, I, I did some work to create that stuff. I'm the, I'm the, uh, I'm the least expensive graphic designer I know to hire. I don't yeah, care. I, I can, I can I relate. Yeah. I don't charge myself anything like everything else in this business, you know, mm -hmm. you've got to kind of become sort of, uh, you know, somewhat acquainted with virtually everything from production to, you know, to, uh, promotion and graphic design and all that stuff. You know, so. And since... perhaps someday I'll, perhaps someday I'll invest myself into writing music as well. Yes. Well, that was going to be my follow-up was if, <laughs> if you're doing the Christmas thing right now, yeah. Come the new year, I know a lot of people that have been on the podcast lately, they're going into writing mode and recording new material. Yeah. So being that you're out and about right now, is that your plan as well? Do you have new content coming? My plan is to look over the shoulders of people who are far more talented than me and uh, steal their work. It's how I got through high school, and it'll damn well work for my music career. But Tara, over to you. <laughs> Well, you know, the best case scenario is I would be one of those shoulders that uh, Mike would deem worthy enough to look over. No, I songwriting for me is the thing that I turn to when there's a bunch of other stuff I should be doing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I do have a new batch of music that I'm kind of tying a bow on now to come out next year. And yeah, I mean, just yesterday I had two different co-writes over zoom the old-fashioned way <laughs> and it's a <laughs> bit of a compulsion so is my suitcase packed no do i have <clears throat> songs in the can yes <laughs> yeah. but the the writing of this song which we did long distance which you know was completely fitting for the theme of the song was so much fun to do it was a, a kind of a back and forth like you know, carrier pigeon style of songwriting. And that was a new experience between Mike and I too. So yeah, it, it all fit together in a very tidy fashion. So I thought you said carry your pigeon. And I was, yes. my in my mind, I was quickly thinking what, what current sort of euphemistic, right. you know, expression have I missed out on with carry your pigeon? Like the probably, a tick, pigeon. <laughs> probably a TikTok video I missed or something, you know. I think we could coin that now. You just have to workshop it a little bit. And then when you're doing I think your it's, tour, uh, you, it. you can confuse people at parties, you know, you can say, oh, I think that's sort of a carry your pigeons situation. If you, I think you'd agree. And and then look and see if who says, oh, totally. Oh yeah. Someone would reuse it instantly. And then walk away and, and console yourself with just how superior you actually are. Anyway, that's a little too much insight into how I operate. You want to get ahead in this business? You got to carry your own pigeon. <laughs> there it is. I love it. You've yeah. one up to you've one up to me again, Spencer. <laughs> so but I'll get you, Gadget. Is this type I, of banter what people can expect <laughs> at the live show? Well, well, if you, uh, lean on our promo videos that we've filmed so right. Well. <laughs> then, yeah, I well, believe that nice. uh, the theaters have insisted that there be one of those giant hooks that they have to from the vaudeville days, like they did on the Little Rascals when they haul alfalfa off the stage. Uh, so I believe that's, you know, that's sort of like in case of emergency, break glass, you know, uh, in case of verbal diarrhea, break glass. Yeah, let's say yes, but only better. Yes. <laughs> Which is hard to imagine, I know, but. <laughs> is is there a, a central place for people to go get tickets or is it like individually by theater that you're performing in? It's competitive. So Mike and I each have a website <laughs> and we are tracking how many visitors we're getting leading up to this show. So it's like casting a vote, basically. You can go to uh, mikebigger.com or terraspencer.ca and we'll announce the winner of the popularity contest in <laughs> on December 8th. <laughs> I mean, there's, I mean, there are, there's really, there's myriad ways to do it. I mean, if people, for example, are faithful, uh, attendees at the Marigold Cultural Center, well, you can go right to their website and uh, and you can find the show listed there and, of course, buy tickets. 
Uh, and ultimately, that's how you would buy tickets for that show and all the shows is through the various venue sites. But as Tara points out, I mean, we just sort of created, you know, you you got to try to um, both tickle the buying bone with a bit of humor and music and then also make it really simple for people like me. And so we have just, as she says, you can just go to, you know, either of our websites and, uh, you know, it's just click, 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 and there you'll be and you, we'll, you can get we'll the carry your pigeon for you. Yes, perfect. It's uh, it's we're working it out. I like that you're workshopping it. What'll happen tomorrow is you'll have some cool co-write with some other incredible artist about carry your pigeon, and then everybody will be going on about how incredible it is. And, yeah, you know, that's the way it is. I I wanted to say something uh, just really quickly about Tara as a writer. You know, I've <clears throat> I've written a bunch over the last many years, but it's been a while since I've kind of. I mean, I have a a like a lot of you know, songwriters, I have loads of uh, voice notes uh, on my phone and, and sort of half written stuff. Um, some of it's some of it's real gobbledygook. Some of it you go back and you listen to the, you know, if you don't, if you record something, and sometimes it's even just a musical idea. So you just sort of ah, da, 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 kind of riff it out. That was a bit sort of Celtic Harry, almost. Sounding. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> And then if you don't finish it up right away and you come back to it like two months later and you listen to it and you think, was I having a seizure when I recorded mm -hmm. this, you know? But anyway, with Tara, she is just so diligent and uh, so prolific as a writer. And so it was a real treat for me to be able to, you know, put my name beside hers on a first, I might add, but beside her name. <laughs> on a song writing together. And then for us to be able to, we just wanted to, when we put this tour together, we knew that it would be useful to have some way to kind of, you know, promote it through a little musical ditty. And uh, we didn't really anticipate that what we would end up with was something we would be quite so happy with, I guess. And the feedback has been really great so far. And so we thought, well, we better sort of release it, you know, properly. And uh, so I, I'm, a little bit behind the the curve uh, with Sportify, but I'm learning about it. And uh, that was a, I left that wide open for you to pick up on Sportify. But... Connection I hadn't made until this moment, which is the fact that technically the very first songs that I wrote were Christmas songs for the funeral home. So Whoa. my boss held a, an amazing Christmas party every year for the funeral home staff and associates and friends. And and I was the, the musical guest at that Christmas party. So for my gift to the boss, I would write him a cheeky song about how the funeral business had gone that year <laughs> for Christmas, a Christmas themed funeral song. And that's what we've written too, Mike. Is... <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> that's how we yeah. pitched it. No. Yeah, uh... <laughs> we uh, look for Tara's follow-up single, Mad at Mortality. Yes. Uh, I guess that's coming up as well, maybe, you know. We'll yeah. put a pre-save link to that in the description below. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I guess it was... So that's your... Reasonable. You've got... You, it goes back to the beginning for you. That's it. I'm going back to my roots. That's it. Well, I, I grew up, uh, uh, Tara knows this, but you might not know this. I, I grew up in a very religious upbringing and uh, um, I, you know, began to sing in church. I was about five years, five years old and, uh, and Christmas music was, you know, always a very central part of kind of my singing through the year. And I, so I, uh, and now that was a lot of, of course, sort of sacred carols of the season and all of that. And so when I, when I kind of came, and then I actually was a minister. I actually went to seminary and became a minister, and which clearly really worked out with me. I'm hanging around with people like Tara Spencer now, <laughs> and uh, I uh, You're a missionary now. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, but I, it's sort of like when Anakin goes over to the dark side. I think a little <laughs> bit for me, but. Anyway, when I came to write a Christmas, to want to make a Christmas album, I, I wanted to be able to take some of that background of my own. And then I wrote a few original songs on there and, uh, you know, kind of twisted around into kind of the roots and bluesy styling that I kind of do. And that was how I kind of came to it in, in the first place. And of course, then it's just carried on through. So, and, and, and as Tara mentions about Christmas songs being kind of where she started as a writer, 
you know, I kind of did this bass backwards. I, this was the first album I ever released was a Christmas album, which was, seemed pretty strange, you know, uh, compared to how it's generally done. That's kind of a novelty thing to do. Generally, you kind of get your mainstream stuff out there and, and so on. But so I guess it's kind of a, been the it was the spawning of kind of a lot of this stuff for me as well. You know, it's like, actually how, that's one of the things where for myself with music, I always like to find stuff that was a little bit different. And that's why I, I leaned into independent stuff a lot, but I always had a collection of Christmas songs, like alternative Christmas songs. I, I, I like the traditionals cause I also similar, I, I grew up in a Christian Catholic family. So, I mean, I was brought up in a similar way where you'd have a lot of the church hymns and everything kind of worked in with the Christmas stuff, right. but I always liked, modern classics and like alternative takes of stuff and it's really exciting to see here in the east coast while i'm covering east coast music that there seems to be a strong appetite for that out live and a lot of artists like yourselves are taking a crack at it and making a go of it too it's an excellent song and i know you were making the comment about spotify but you do have a YouTube lyric video out there already as well. Uh, we do. And actually, we're officially announcing its release right here on your podcast, man. So how about that? Oh, it's out there and it's available for anybody that goes to. Now, this is the competitive thing that Tara mentioned. It's a little weird to figure oh. out how to do this. And we talked about where do we release the lyric video because we each have a YouTube channel, obviously. Mm -hmm. And you can't, you can collaborate, you know, as writers, and then you can collaborate on live stream videos on social media. You can collaborate in something like this great podcast, but, you know, they sort of force you to decide which uh, cylinder you're going to drop the video into. So uh, we chose to put it on my YouTube channel. So oh, yeah, we chose. <laughs> we, uh, the royal we, uh, I'm referring to there, you know, yeah. Alph alphabetic, uh, alphabetical that's what it was no oh, okay fair enough i did uh, i knew the name bigger would work in my favor eventually <laughs> dear diary it finally happened <laughs> it's, it's only fair because mike honestly has gone so far over the top with this whole project from uh you know producing the song assembling the musicians who contributed to it making this incredible artwork and putting this video you know you say a lyric video but mike really <laughs> went full tilt with that video i love it <laughs> i appreciate <clears> the <throat> details and uh yeah yeah he really just uh exceeded all your expectations well you're very sweet the stark absence of any gigs in my current situation will be apparent <laughs> for anybody who watches the video as they think to themselves does this guy ever put pants on and go outside the house or does he just sit at that computer Incredible in front of that creepy wall that he painted behind him. <laughs> oh, I'm uh, just happy to collect my thank you for participating ribbon. <laughs> uh, but before our time together ends, Darcy, I just have to acknowledge that you have gone over the top yourself with your holiday decor. You have <laughs> their stocking hung on yep. what might be your computer tower. I can't tell. <laughs> uh, red shirt. Uh, Santa hat and yeah. a microphone cover that looks very much like Rudolph's nose. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Really <laughs> full respect for uh, the effort you've put in, even though it's only November 28th. I know. I feel almost a little guilty because I'm not typically in the Christmas spirit this early on, but I'm loving it so far. Thanks to the wonderful music I'm hearing out there and having guests every couple of days where we're talking about Christmas tours. It's really nice. So thank I wasn't, you. I wasn't sure that you weren't Tim Allen in the Santa Claus, <laughs> the way you yes. North Pole, that set you've got there. It's, and it's I'm, like, I'm slowly it's, growing a beard in too. So I, I may or I may not done. have a Santa Claus thing going on. So what is the one thing on your wish list this year? That's the central point of the song we wrote. So once question. Popping that's up, a really good question. Top three. I I it's it's gonna sound super sappy and cheesy, but it it Great. really is just uh, friends and family time. Oh come on! I I I I have to I have to say that's not, that's not even me just looking for the right answer. Can't I would relate. Say that's Ooh. Yeah, I I'm spoiled through the year. I uh, yeah. 
I, I don't live a super lavish lifestyle, but uh, I know, Tara, you're somebody that sees me out there. I, I get a lot of opportunities through the year to have quite a bit of fun. So, Look, Tara, I know you are someone who does. <laughs> right. Yeah. right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't live a lavish lifestyle, but Tara, I know that uh, you can't relate to that statement. <laughs> uh, that's oh. the edit I was planning later, but now you spoiled yeah. it, so I'll have to that's just that, it. I see that ex- I see that executive class pa- wood paneling on the wall behind you there. <laughs> yeah. I assume it's uh, somewhat like gold toilets at Mar-a-Lago, where you are. <laughs> yes. It's made from endangered amazonian tree species (laughs) i noticed terry you've got a couple of those big driveway candles christmas candles behind you but they don't match but they don't match and they've been there all year mike (laughs) (laughs) those are indoor candles yeah yeah, indoor candles yeah uh i need light indoors (laughs) i just wonder who, who who buys those one at a time such that they wouldn't match or was there some driveway accident with a snowplow or something that took one of them out at some point? Oh gosh, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> really, it's not. It's a family you choose. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to encourage anybody that's watching this episode that is now going to go out and buy a ticket to go to one of these shows. Look so, through your decorations. If you happen to have a stray candle that you don't have a pair for. Bring it to the show and give it to Tara, and eventually she'll have two pairs. Oh. People are people are talking. So. Yes. <laughs> well, we'll get yeah. you. We'll get we'll get you a proper set. Well, just in case, Darcy, what your secret wish is for Christmas: a giant plastic candle. Yes. Yes. That's well, there you go. News for you. Send me your postal box. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Nothing celebrates the arrival of baby Jesus more than a giant plastic novelty candle yes. for, your, for your driveway. Oh, yeah, a... the Prince of Peace has come. Clearly, so uh, we... I'll tell you what I'll tell you what I've been I what I've been uh, my Christmas <laughs> sorry what my Christmas <laughs> wish list is. I mean, our song is about two people who you know are very chapped because they had this one wish of being together that uh, old Saint Nick decided not to fulfill. But uh, personally, you know, as a musician, as an artist, I've been really eyeing that fancy uh, rent in the store window. I'd like to buy that, get that for Christmas. It's a rent. It's it's everywhere. That'd be good. I just looked around here, my friends, and realized that also something that has been here all year is an unopened package of long underwear made right here at Windsor Wear at the former textile mill. So, you know, popularity contest just got a lot hotter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> prizes I, for everybody. They have prizes. <laughs> yes. Tara Spencer, what, what's the Yes. I'm starting to wonder if a phone call to the police might be in order. <laughs> yes. Might be a hostage situation there. I'm, there are seems... two headless mannequins. One's up there. One's I saw them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Anyhow, that's, that's, that's another tour for another time. <laughs> I, I I love it. I, I I always have different things in the background, so I'm loving that everyone on this call has has attention to detail as far as those things too. Attention to detail. I think yeah. in the new year we'll just have episodes where we just look in the camera to see what people <laughs> have in the background and just talk about that. Spy cam. All right, we will play out with Matt at Santa and. Once everybody has heard this, add it to your own playlist so we get those stream numbers up. And maybe we'll hear a follow-up next year, possibly. Don't count on it. (laughs) Not after the headless mannequins. I mean, they likely had heads at some point. She she went too far. (laughs) All right. Thank you both for your time. And uh, hopefully I can find a way to get to one of those shows. I didn't see a Pector County date, but uh, Maricol's not that far away. We're in Truro, so come on yeah. by, buddy. You're our guest if you come by, for sure. Perfect. Thank you very much, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thanks so much, man. Really grateful for the uh, chance to chat. See you well, soon, Tara. Thanks, Have fun in Alberta. See you, bud. Yes, make sure to come back. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Well, I'm hot and bothered. Got a bone to pick 
gonna write another letter to old Saint Nick. I've been a good girl. I didn't ask for much. I don't need any jewelry, fancy clothes, and such. But now it's Christmas morning and the mantle is bare. My stockings are empty, slung over a chair. All the ribbons and bows have been untied. But you're not here by my side. Now I'm mad, mad at Santa. Mad, mad at Santa. Mad, I'm mad as can be. Cause Santa didn't bring you here to be with me. Well, I'm cross with old Chris Kringle. It's his fault, huh? I'm sitting here single I said all I want Is you here to jingle these bells with me Underneath the mistletoe I tried so hard Not to be naughty No crying, no pouting Yeah, for sure I thought he'd bring the one Christmas gift I asked for only But here I am crying so fast And Santa One job. They really blew it, boys. I'm mad, yeah. I'm even more mad. You know, I sat right there on his lap at the mall and read him the whole list and everything. For this. I tell you, it's a real boot in the old butterball. Were they the wrong cookies or something? I bought you all this eggnog. I hate eggnog! I cleaned my chimney for this. You know, when I said warm and snuggly, I didn't mean socks! I'd like to speak to the manager.